What advice would you give your younger self? To never marry. To never marry. Everything is based on your word. And most men, real men, I would think, don't hold women to their word like they would hold men to their word because Never. women are more emotional. She could feel this way certain at certain times. She could feel this way. So you let them slide. But with a man, it's like, I don't give a f how you feel. You're coming mm -hmm. into work. I don't yeah. give a f how you feel. Like You so got to do what you said you was going to do. This conversation is a good example of the expectations of masculinity or should I say masculinity as a service. I, I try to put myself into a female's perspective and shoes all the time. And I just feel like most of the women I know don't do that. And they don't realize like what men go through. They just don't see it. Like he said, that word accountability, you accountable for every, every, every Thing. If you're old enough to remember the 1992 Dream Team, one of the things that sticks out about this roster is that Christian Leitner was on it. And some people lamented him being on the team, but he was the best player in college basketball that year. And he was there for another reason, which men, both black and white, understand. If you are upset that Caitlin Clark did not make the women's basketball Olympics roster, I'm going to say two things to you. I'm going to assume that one, you really don't like basketball or really watch it. And two, that you only see Caitlin Clark as a mascot and not a basketball player. And some of y'all sound real silly how y'all speaking on USA Women's Basketball in the committee for their decision not to have Caitlin Clark on that roster. Y'all sound real silly and y'all think y'all making sense and you're not. There's no doubt that there were politics involved in the selection of that team, but the team did exactly what it was supposed to do. It boomed NBA ratings and revenue to a point that had never been seen before. Mission accomplished. But something else happened in 1992 as well. I think that I could have done all the things that I have done without a man. That was the last year that women's Olympic basketball did not win the gold medal. As a matter of fact, it was the last time they lost the game. When you look at their record, they have not lost a single game since 1992, which brings us back to a simple point of opportunity cost. And in the comments, there are some men saying, well, where's the husband? Well, where's the man? Well, where's this, that, and the third? I feel that she did what was best for her at her particular age. I think that I could have done all the things that I have done without a man. Maybe there was not a male suitor that fit her needs as far as a partner, and she decided to move forward with raising the child via IVF. She's not the first. She won't be the last. And I don't have a problem with this. I don't. Where are all the black men? And I'm not talking about the scammers, the drug dealers, the robbers, and the, and the crooks. Did you know that a load balancer working with an auto scaling group working across multiple availability zones is one of the best ways to ensure resiliency in your web applications? Did you know that you could access private S3 buckets or even DynamoDB tables through a gateway endpoint? The things I'm teaching you are a function of opportunity cost. In order to learn these things, I had to sacrifice something else. And what I sacrificed was an excellent, excellent conversation in class. Women today because of men's failed leadership, women today because of men's inability to make them feel secure, make them feel safe, this this is exactly what happens women will choose to raise a child on their own but if women are choosing that harder road deliberately versus wanting to do it alongside a man has nothing to do with the woman it has nothing to do with the woman and everything to do with the way women men have made women feel unsafe unsecure because they've been unreliable for the past god knows how many years and what a story we get here we first meet young william gates Specifically, the turnoff was when I asked that okay, question right about now. would you date a single mother? And Jacoby, you proceeded to tell me that basically you're a high value man and you are too good for a single mother. He is sent off from his home in the projects to a mostly white middle class suburban Catholic high school. However, you did also tell me that you were raised by a single mother, which is profound for me to think that a single mother is not good enough for you, but it's good enough for a woman to raise you. That's unfair, and it's very insensitive. It specializes in recruiting black basketball stars. Just because it's a cycle, I wanted to wanted to continue. 
I'm it doesn't just, have so, to continue. So what I'm saying is, it's, is that it's more about why would you cut off and say that single women are not on the same level? What you're supposed to learn from is history. So you're a very intelligent woman. Statistically speaking, yes. I would say it would be better to raise your child in a two-parent household. You're a very intelligent woman, right? Yes. So if you know, if, as, a, as a woman growing up, you know it's the less likelihood for you to be successful by having a child. So what you do, you be more proactive. Using condoms. What's that got to do with your... He asked me, do I want to be a great player? And I keep saying, yeah. He said, for four years, I'm going to be on you every day. So he said, you might as well get used to it now. If you've seen Hoop Dreams, you know how the story played itself out. His coach saw him as the next Isaiah Thomas, and he had the promise of the next Isaiah Thomas, but he didn't have the mental toughness of Isaiah Thomas. And coming from a home where he had a single mother, he soon got his girlfriend pregnant, and when he went to his coach for advice, the coach told him advice that he couldn't really vibe with. Write them off. But there's a reason why the coach told him that. So you you were raised by a single mother. Yes. And is I, your mother still alive? I struggle. My mom's still did alive. Did she struggle or did you struggle? A gentleman watching the video of the panel attacking the gentleman for having his preference for not wanting to replicate the kind of home he grew up in asked a simple question. My question is why the men sit there and didn't back him up. And the answer to that is simple. It's a bit of programming for black men that we are kind of taught that we just perform manhood as a service. What advice would you give your younger self? To never marry. To never marry. When my two husbands and my father all died within three months and I found myself Betty because I was no longer Betty Charbonnet, no longer Betty Reed, I was no longer defined my someone else's name. The responses to saying that getting married was something that she would not do if she had a chance to live her life again is something that was heralded in the comments. That is par for the course for discourse in modern day dating circles. But what is left out of this conversation is one very important thing, opportunity cost. Look, black women, you have a 26% chance of getting married in your entire lifetime. It doesn't matter if you marry out of your race it doesn't matter if you marry same sex you have a very small chance of getting married it was this back and forth in the video about ebony k williams that is kind of emblematic of the kind of discourse that's being had in 2024 a young lady says we don't need them we just need their material and ivf to get girls and they have some kind of back and forth probably where he says something about her profile pic and he says lol my apologies sister I'm a lady with exclamation points. LOL, I didn't click on your profile until afterwards. My sincere apologies, beautiful sister. This is him apologizing to someone that is emphatically stating that she doesn't need him. Number two, up to 40%, I said 40%, of the kids that's tested is not the man's kid. That is a fact. We're not saying 40% of children. We're saying 40% of kids that's tested is not the man's child. Looking back on Hoop Dreams, I see William Gates as somewhat of a tragedy figure in that he was in a no-win situation. His coach told him what he needed to do. And this was advice that was echoed in the unfortunate meeting that I missed because I was studying. If you wanna help the people that are around you, that are closest to you, you can't help them where you are. You might have to help them a different way and that might begin with cutting them off because you can't be the guy that you need to be if you're trying to sacrifice to people that are not trying to help you get to the best place for yourself. Third, women, stop acting like your stuff don't stink. You are no better in these marriages. You keep saying what men do, what men gotta do, what men gotta do, but what are you doing for these men? As a matter of fact, the men that you complain about, you raised them. And I don't mean generational wise i mean just gender wise we're raising the type of men that we complain about looking at the modern attendance of the WNBA, as a man we understand masculinity as a service we have to perform if we don't perform if we don't deliver we get replaced or we don't get a chance anymore and to look at a situation like this is obvious 
if you're not getting the kind of attendance that you need, you have to do what you have to do, not what feels good. And it's crazy because women keep going on, oh, he may cheat and find another a woman, so I need to get all this education um, that makes $40,000 a year. I'm throwing that part in there. So that if he leave me, I can take care of myself. First of all, most men don't leave. Most men are not leaving you for other people. <laughs> it's like they keep going to the most asinine. It's like, why? Am I saying in this video that women can't be leaders? Of course not. I think there are a variety of very capable, fantastic women leaders. But what happens when men lead is we understand there is something that is at risk. There is opportunity cost. And in this dichotomy of if I'm going to lead, something is going to be risk. I'm going to have to give up something in order to get something. If in the new environment, what is getting taken away is family and being able to raise your kids and you're still being told to perform masculinity as a service, that's just not something that many guys are gonna bite on. And what I don't think is understood well enough is that for many young ladies, they simply think that they can remove that from the table and still get the same masculinity as a service. And unfortunately for many young ladies, they'll learn all too soon that it won't be much longer. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, comment below. I'll catch the next video. Take care.